You're listening to Sweet Bites with Sandra with your host, Sandra Colton Medici. Tune in every Thursday to satisfy your entrepreneurial sweet tooth. Follow on Instagram at Sweet Bites with Sandra Podcast and Sandra Colton Medici. You can also join our Facebook group at facebook.com forward slash groups forward slash Sweet Bites with Sandra. Hi, I'm Sandra, and I'd like to invite you to subscribe and listen to my new podcast, Sweet Bites with Sandra. Satisfy your entrepreneurial sweet tooth in each episode full of digital business tips, inspiring interviews, asides from my entertainment career, and rewards to celebrate your sweet success. Find Sweet Bites with Sandra on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or wherever you listen to your favorite podcasts. I am joined today by a wonderful, wonderful woman. Her name is Jane Ubell, and let me give you a little bit of her background. A former TV and film producer, Jane's credits include Good Morning America, Entertainment Tonight, and so many other things, including producing several films. She's an award-winning entrepreneur. She founded the BedsideReading.com company, which I am so excited to talk about and bring you um, so much more information to you about. This company is dedicated to promoting authors as speakers, as brands, and by placing their books in luxury and boutique hotels and on social media. So bedside reading is kind of like book candy for every guest. So welcome, Jane. Thank you so much for joining me. My pleasure. Thank you, Sandra. I'm so excited for you on your new journey. Well, thank you. <laughs> it is it is a definitely a different path, but you know, I am so excited because I get to meet people like you and introduce the great things that you're, you know, one have already accomplished, but two are, you know, spreading goodness in the world right now. And you know, everyone needs to read more. And I feel like if you're putting it in front of them, that is the easiest way to have access, right? That is right. Absolutely. Definitely. We love, we love readers and we love books. Exactly. I love authors. So what could, what could be bad? Yeah. Well, and your your background involves so many adventures. It's, it feels like every time when I read your bio, I was like, oh my gosh, she's been so many places and done so many things and met so many intriguing and interesting people. Can you tell our listeners what it felt like to launch a company called Buzz Bags, which if you don't know about it, she's kind of, I think you're the inventor of like celebrity gifting. Am I not right? One of the very, really original companies to actually monetize gift bags. So yes, exactly. And you took the company Buzz Bags, which you had with you, with a partner, and pivoted solo into Madison and Mulholland. And so, can you talk about what it felt like one to to kind of bring this to fruition, the idea, but then also to just go solo? How does that feel to kind of just take the take the reins and and fly? So we'll start with a uh, buzz bag. So I'll tell you what happened back in September 11th, 2001 was a terrible time for everybody. I had left television production and I had a beauty PR firm. And when 9-11 came about, everybody in New York City stopped. All except one client put us on hiatus. I was getting married. My business partner was getting divorced. And so it was really time to like try something new. Mm-hmm. Right before 9-11, a client of mine, we had a, um, as a PR firm, we had a beautiful party event for him at his office. And at the last minute, my partner and I created these beautiful little gift bags and we got all our friends from all the major beauty companies to provide samples and products and delicious, wonderful makeup. And we put them in these cute bags with tissue paper. And we lined the reception area with all these beautiful gift bags. All of a sudden, when the party started, we had all these women in the Upper East Side women storming the office and screaming, I want a goodie bag. I want a goodie bag. (laughs) And a friend of mine who became my partner uh, was there. And she said, you know, Jane, this could be a business. And I went, you know, maybe you're right. And so we decided that we were going to start a company called Buzz Bags because I was, don't forget, it was ending you know, my business relationship, I was getting married, a little thing, things had to change. Mm-hmm. So in 2002, we launched a company called Buzz Bags and we placed books and products in the Hamptons on the Hampton Jitney, which were the buses that went from New York City to the Hamptons. And that really grew very quickly right away. 
as soon as we started, we had uh, a call from Sting's company, his charity called the, I think it was the Rainforest Foundation. And they asked us to do their gift bags for that event. And then the uh, Broadway called, we did the gift bags for Billy Joel's Broadway show and Hairspray and all these different companies started calling us, even Universal Studios called us. So all of a sudden we're in the gift celebrity gift bag business. And so that was really exciting. And then, but after a while, I'll tell you what happened. My my partner, which is really, she has since passed away. She got us into Entrepreneur Magazine. It was a full page. And the day that we got into Entrepreneur Magazine, United Airlines called us and said, oh, we love your gift bag idea. Can you do gift bags for us for our first and business class passengers going from New York to LA and New York, San Francisco? We said, of course, Yes. <laughs> right. <laughs> at that time, though, my business partner and I, when you start a company, you really have to look at who you're partnering with. At the time, on the surface, it was real rosy and wonderful. But when you dig a little bit deeper and you learn about people's values and the way they see things, if you're not on the same page, it doesn't make for a good partnership. Mm-hmm. So we split up. And what I decided to do was to take the United Airlines idea. And she benefited from that. So she wasn't left out. And we, I launched Madison and Mulholland based on the fact that I always, I used to live in LA. I've Mm -hmm. lived in New York and I wanted to be bi-coastal. I wanted that kind of lifestyle. So I created Madison for Madison Avenue and Mulholland because I used to live on Mulholland Drive in Beverly Hills. And so I launched that program really with United Airlines contract with that, with that program. And while it was difficult to split up, you know, any kind of company or a partnership, I learned a lot of valuable lessons. And there are things that you need to know before you have any business partner, which is what is your exit strategy? So while you're in the honeymoon phase, you have to figure out what happens if we don't like each other? What happens if I want to, you know, if I take off and I want to retire or I want to do this, I want to do that. You have to figure out what is your exit strategy before you even as you're getting married. So that's kind <laughs> right. of the really interesting thing to think about. Anyway, so going solo was never scary because I always surrounded myself by wonderful, supportive people. My family, my husband, my friends have always been there for me. I'm an entrepreneur and that's my spirit. And so Fear is never in my world. I don't think about fear. I just think about, oh, what are the possibilities? Mm -hmm. I'm an optimist by nature. So I just keep going forward and thinking, what can I do to help people? Does my service solve a problem? And I believe that Madison Mulholland really did solve a problem. People wanted to get their products, their accessories, their jewelry, their books into the hands of celebrities. Mm -hmm. And that's what we did. And we did that for 16 years. That was a good run. Yeah. I mean, talk about consistency, right? (laughs) Well, so when you are, you were talking about the beauty PR firm and then transitioning into this, you know, gifting side of things. And now you have something called bedside reading. Can you talk about, you know, what the inspiration was for this? Because, you know, I look at it like, wow, you know, you walk into a hotel room, there's a, you know, nicely placed book on the side of the bedside, you know, and, and, and maybe I read it, maybe I don't, but I definitely look at it. Right. So what was kind of the, the inspiration for this particular business? So this actually comes from a funny story. Well, at the time it wasn't funny, but I look back <laughs> on it. It's kind of funny. So when I was in my twenties, I had this boyfriend and I was crazy about him, like suit, like insane. <laughs> and he said to me, Jane, if you learn how to scuba dive, I will take you to the uh, St. Martin in the Caribbean. I went, I'm in. So like an idiot, I jumped into the pool at the YMCA in New York City. I learned how to scuba dive. It was really tough. I didn't like it, but I went, I like this guy. So, you know, you know, sometimes people in their 20s, they do something for someone that they are really into. Yes. So I did that (laughs) and we go to St. Martin's and we go to this beautiful suite. And before he opens the door, he goes, you know, Jane, I really like you, but. (laughs) And I went, (gasps) And he said, let's just be friends. I'm just not into you. And I'm sorry, but I'm not. And, but I really like you and you're really smart and let's be friends. So I was devastated. Right before I left, literally the night before, 
My stepmother, Marcia, gave me a book to read called Try to Heaven by Anne Rice. It was a big, heavy, thick book. It was like 500 pages or something. Mm-hmm. And at the last minute, I went, oh, my God, I'm going to take this big, heavy book with me. And it, But I did. I put it in my bag. And I will tell you, I spent the seven days scuba diving and reading my book. Mm-hmm. And that book saved my trip because I love the book so much. It was a page turner and every, and I was so upset when the book ended. And it was the one thing I remember later in life is that always take a book with you, whether you're in an elevator, you're in a train, you're in a plane, you're uh, at a, going on a vacation, a hotel, always take a book with you because you never know when you're going to need to take your brain and just pour it into something else. Mm-hmm. So I remember that moment. And later on in life, that was the impetus. Now, we always put books in our celebrity gift bags, for the most part. And so when I decided to end Madison and Mulholland, I decided, what am I going to do that's going to really make me happy? And I launched, uh, I really love my authors. I'm a huge reader. And I always wanted to help authors promote their books. So Bedside Reading started with the concept of that every hotel should have fresh, beautiful, best-selling books by the bedside. And now as it's going on because of COVID, we have now shifted to eBooks and audiobooks, and we're allowing the hotels to promote the books in every way they can. And we promote the books and the authors every way we can. So we're still helping our authors. They're not giving physical books out right this minute. Although there are two hotels that are taking physical books, books but for the most part, they are digital. So I still have this feeling in, inside of me that I'm really here to help the author. And some of the authors that need the most help are independent authors. And independent authors are usually, they are self-published and they're by themselves. They may have a fan base, they may not, but they really need our help. So we're really a service to help independent authors as well as mainstream. Mm-hmm. I mean, we work with every major publisher. So that's what we do. But so bedside reading is evolving, and right now we're doing not only hotels, but we're also doing virtual events, and we work with event planners, and that's kind of, it's like a digital gift bag of books that anybody can get. In fact, what I'll do for you, Sandra, any if anyone's listening, mm-hmm. I hope people are listening, Yeah, <laughs> give you the link where they can get our complimentary uh, suite of books. Oh, That's- thank you. You're welcome. That's awesome. Well, so I, I, it's the first time anybody has ever said our digital gift bag. And I'm sure that it's been in the, in the lingo, but I just know that I'm leaning in, you know, and I hope that people are, you know, when they listen to this and whether you're binge listening to our episodes or if it's the first time that you're, you know, making it through. I just look at some of the things that that may have been like a challenge for you to just kind of leap over. And it seems like you've done it with such grace. So what has been the biggest challenge for you since you began your career? So the biggest challenge for me has been, I guess, not having a financial backer. And my father, who I'm very close to, and he's been my mentor, has been a really great backer of mine. But I never had a corporation saying, you know, here's a million dollars, go ahead and do what you need to do. Mm -hmm. So I think the challenge has been doing this the grassroots way and taking it one step at a time and finding out which is number one, the fastest way to the cash. Number two is finding out if what I'm doing really can help people. And three, when you're an entrepreneur, you're launching a business, you really work 24 seven. There's no nine to five. Mm -hmm. So I think the biggest challenge has been is realizing how to pace myself and so that I don't burn out and that I can really do a great job for people and finding great partners. So partners are people that, um, like we partner with Bauer Media and we do giveaways of our books every month in all their magazines. And we do giveaways with other, we have other magazines that we work with. So it's finding really great partners. And that's not been a challenge as much as I'm just one person. Mm-hmm. Without you know being bankrolled to actually hire a team of people, every single person I've hired has been through my own dime. Mm-hmm. So that's always the challenge: is where do you put your money? And if you're paying somebody, you know, X amount of dollars a year, is this a return on that investment? Mm-hmm. And does this make sense? 
you have to pay very close attention to the numbers. Sometimes I am better at it than other times when I get swept away in what I'm doing, but you really have to pay attention to the budget and not overextend. Yeah. Well, so when you're thinking about where you're putting your money, that's my next question is what's your favorite piece of maybe equipment or software or hack that you've learned or some special secret sauce that, you, you know, like what, what is it that you can't live without right now? Okay, Right now, this is my favorite thing to talk about. Mm-hmm. So we have something called, it's a service. It's inexpensive. It's $59, I think for the whole year. And it's called mail track. M A I L T R A C K. Mm-hmm. That's it. Dot I O could be, I don't know. You'll have to look it up, but <laughs> okay. this is why this is critical. If you have a Gmail account and you sign up for MailTrack, it will tell you every single email that's opened, how many times somebody opened it, if they did not open it, when they opened it, and it gives you so much information. I'll tell you a funny story. We have a, a we have a hotel. I, w- when I was starting this, I was reaching out to hotels to see if they wanted bedside reading. And this one hotel I reached out to, the general manager opened up my email 49 times. <gasps> but never responded. Okay. So I sent him an email and I said, you know, you are my number one pick of a hotel for this particular region. We're not for everybody and that's okay. So I, I'm going to take you off of my list of top hotels that I would like to put on my, in my program. If you're not interested, just let me know. It's not a problem. doesn't matter. We're not for everybody. And he opened that one up 12 times. And then finally, I sent him another email saying, so I get your silence and I really wish you well. So I'm going to be taking you off my list of top hotels that I'm really interested in working with. He called me in five minutes and now they're one of my favorite partners. Oh my goodness. So now I never tell him that I had mail track to discover that. <laughs> But right. MailTrack will give you MailTrack gives you lots of information, so it tells you. And now they have something called campaign, so you can send the same email to up to two hundred people, and it's not CC'd or BCC'd. It just sends it as if it's an individual email alone, mm-hmm. and then you can tell who's opening up your emails. That is and awesome. when they open, how many times? Nice. So that's my hack. That is my <laughs> favorite thing, and I cannot leave without it. It looks like, because I was looking it up while we were talking, it looks like it's a Google Chrome extension, something like this. It, so, it, it, yes, it yeah. is a Google Chrome extension. So I have Safari, which I use 99% of the time, but since it's a Google Chrome extension, I've switched to Chrome. <laughs> right? That's just the way of the world. Well, so any future projects. I know that you have, you've taught classes at universities, and, and yes. so what is... And you've, you're also, um, you know, an established artist. Um, so what is in your future beyond this? Because you're an entrepreneur and I just want to know, <laughs> what should I be looking out for that you're coming up with next? It's such a great question because, in fact, this week and I have been talking to my husband about that, you know, as well. So one thing I did last, when COVID hit, you know, you have to pivot immediately. So uh, I p- published a magazine called Bedside Reading the Magazine, and it was really 32 pages, beautiful. It's beautifully done. The um, the graphic designer is awesome. And so it was very, very well received. Everybody loved it. I think that I'm going to do the magazine again for next spring, spring, summer mm-hmm. of what to read for 2021, because I had such a great time publishing this magazine. And I like the fact that it was, it's so helpful to people and it was not a big, it wasn't a lot of money for the authors to um, join us. And it was a big return on that investment. So for me, I think the next thing I'm going to be doing is in the summer with our second edition of this magazine. That is awesome. See, I knew you had something up your sleeve. (laughs) Also, um, I definitely want, I'm like a shark. If you don't keep moving, you (laughs) you die. So 
<laughs> right. Well, I want to thank you definitely for joining Sweet Bites with Sandra on this podcast. I know I've learned a lot and I hope people listening have learned a lot and you definitely use the hack that you mentioned and go to your website so that, you know, you can look at, I know where you're going to provide a link. I'll put it into the extra bite as well. So make sure that you go to Sweet Bites with Sandra podcast so that you can find all that good information. And I will definitely post it everywhere on social media too. So thank you so much, Jane. It's my pleasure, Sandra, and I wish you all the best. Thank you. Tune in every Thursday to satisfy your entrepreneurial sweet tooth with me, Sandra Colta Medici, on Sweet Bites with Sandra. Follow Sweet Bites with Sandra on Instagram at Sweet Bites with Sandra Podcast. You can also follow my personal profile at Sandra Colta Medici. And please join our group on Facebook. It's facebook.com forward slash groups forward slash Sweet Bites with Sandra. And all the time, Bites is spelled B Y T E S. <laughs>